here and then it's not too far, it's just off Shaftesbury Avenue. Uh, but that's what I can do. We'll catch you later, um, around. perhaps yeah. at Munster Road or uh -huh. wherever, or Denmark Street, I'm sure yeah. we'll meet. Are you okay, you got the list? And You've got 16. I've got 16 people, I'm definitely a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. The people keep disappearing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So off we go to find the coach. We've got to walk a short distance from us. Oh, some other Yes fans <laughs> shouting across. They've just spotted us. Don't want to miss their chance. There's two buses going this morning, about 15, 16 in each one. And I'm here with uh, Jeff Bailey. I'll have a word with him in a minute. And uh, London is rather overcast as we walk off to try and find the bus. But uh, everyone's in very good spirits indeed. Talking about the show last night, those who went. And, uh, really looking forward to what happens on this amazing tour organised by Dave Watkinson. Okay, so sort of over here, that'd be great. I want to talk about that place. So you're a in front of the studio. It's one of the sort of uh, most famous recording studios. Uh, run by uh, two brothers by the name Sheffield and they did all the early production for uh, Queen albums. Didn't do a, the relationship was not great, they kind of fell out because the idea Queen would uh, record early in the morning, sort of 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. cheap and of course that delayed everything. So they rather fell out. That was the song you might know, Death on Two Legs of uh, Night in the Opera. That's probably about one of them. <laughs> but this is where Space on the Team was uh, recorded. David Bowie. Of course, keyboard player on that. Wait, 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 absolutely, yeah. it's recorded here. <laughs> we think that something's coming. Uh, was recorded here as well. Still the plastic Ono band. So Alan Mike drumming. The here. T Rex. Uh, James Taylor. Ringo Starr. Uh, one of the White Album recorded here. Dear Prudence and so on recorded here as well. Okay, so here is uh, the Marquee. Uh, what? which um, originally was in Oxford Street and then was here from 64 to 88 and it's where Yes played their second gig. I think the first one was West Mersey, is that right? So it's somewhere way out in Essex, east of here. So it's a bit of a long day today, we can't go that far. But this is there where they played their second gig and everyone has played here, all the rock bands played here. Probably most famous, they put the plaque up for Keith Moon, who played here and he was, a, he was a character and a half. So this is the club, and it was here till 1988. Joe Satriani was the last one. Moved again, but sort of finally closed in the early 2000s. But a really, really famous club. But probably for uh, you might be more famous, we would have 100 more on the street, and actually it's a bit to the left. We've got these yellow bricks. That was where La Chasse was. So this is where John Anderson worked, cleaning the floors, wiping the tables, all the stuff, and that's where he met Chris Squire. And the chateau was on the first floor, so what I've got, I've got a picture here if you want to pass it around, and that will sort of show you where it was. So it's got a small club, uh, but it was on the first floor, I think it went slightly across. It's been difficult to find out exactly how the extent of it's closed many years. We've still got a bit of a club here anyway, which is nice, but this is probably a lot cleaner and smarter. Whereas that was probably one of those kind of clubs where you walked along and the floor was a bit a bit sticky and it's all smoked and whatever, so it had a lot more atmosphere. So this is, um, yeah, 22 Gosfield Street, Advision Studios, the uh, sound company now, now. But that is what is nice, is it's still a bit of a recording studio. We'll do with sort of uh, voiceovers and, uh, and so on, but at least it's still being used. A lot of the others have closed because home recordings and all sorts of stuff. But it's time, it was the, one of the ones, the most high tech one. It was the first studio to have a 16 track and then a this is why people came. So you got, you know, look at the names: uh, Pink Floyd, Sedar Square, Elton John, Kate Bush, um, Travox, Bowie, McCartney. They all came here. But I said this is uh, the Yes. This is the uh, the Yes album and Fragile, and probably several others. And the uh, the engineer was Eddie Offord, again well known. Um, so this was where it was it was recorded. Um, uh, on your right, on your right, this are interesting. This is the pheasant tree. And uh, it used to be a place for pheasants. It used to be used to raise pheasants. Because this is, the original King's Road was the road for the king. 
in this case Charles II, who was king in the late 1600s. So he'd go from his palace down in Hampton Court, and then along here to his palace at uh, Whitehall, and um, uh, St James's Palace. So it was for 100, 150 years a royal way, but we're all allowed to go there now, and usually a lot of very beautiful people along here. Um, then we came back to for ballet, actually. Um, but then uh, in the 60s, uh, or in the earlier, actually it was a place for, it was a club. It was the Pheasantry, we think it's what's called the Pheasantry. And again, this is where Yes played very in their early days. It's probably more famous for actually where the band Queen were discovered. Mm. Yeah, so what you're looking at here, this is where the artwork was done for Something's Coming. So have you taken your photos? Do you want yeah. me to take a big group of you? Do you do it? Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to move up, just walk up a little bit further and to where they actually lived um, uh, in the early period, 68, 69. So uh, follow me. <laughs> okay, so where all the lovely uh, flowers are, this is 50A Monster Road and this is the, the Yes House. Uh, and just not a kind of great picture, but uh, there it is of, uh, of Monster Road in the 60s. And it was, you know, fairly cheap area to live. They all divided up. Behind you is your council uh, flats, the so social housing flats. It may well probably be a little bit also a bit bomb damaged down around here as well. Um, it was a good mixture. Um, Chris was in the basement. John Anderson and his girlfriend and later wife Jenny was at the top. Um, very top was the landlady. And she was quite easy going apparently. Um, and if they wanted any mates to come and say, just um, I found a bottle or uh, a bottle of brandy or a bottle of gin, and she was a she was a happy bunny for that. <laughs> um, it wasn't the most, they weren't the most domesticated of people. Apparently, John Anderson uh, he liked to fry up. He liked a nice breakfast, and apparently they, he didn't do the washing. He didn't wash his plate up for a month. Oh. <laughs> Chris Squire was a bit of a slot. Well, he was always in the bath. Uh -huh. the, I gather it's one of the reasons why he's called fish, but I've also heard Pisces. Mm. And, and there's another any other re there's something else of another reason yesterday but anyway he was here so he was a nightmare because I could never get in the bathroom um, mm -hmm. Tony Kerr said didn't live here because uh, he preferred his own little social life so he had his uh, flat in Chelsea so not too far from here uh, but Robert Fripp used to crash out here as well because not far from here just around the corner a little further there's a cafe and that's where King Crimson were formed mm -hmm. so again I said they all knew each other um, and Peter Banks was here and uh, yeah, so, so and it's still, it's not actually, but unfortunately it was another curtain store, so we're okay. But this is their sort of, uh, this is the early, their early house, but some way from town. And they used to get uh, buses, uh, sometimes they get taxis as well, but they used to get, all the, get on the local bus and just take them up to the gigs. Our next stop is uh, Blazes, which is one of the very early, early gigs there, so it's where we're going next. So they, they would have just got the bus up there. Possibly would have driven, but uh, that's what they tended to do when they came and go. Apparently, they didn't socialise that much because I think they were, were together playing together so much, they probably just wanted a peace and quiet from each other. <laughs> but again, it's all these little groups just you know, living together, like the Beatles in Green Street and whatever. And then when they got a bit more money, then they moved up. And we will pass. We unfortunately can't go directly past because uh, the bus is too wide. But I'll show you a place where they lived, uh, Chris and John lived a bit later, which is a much smarter area because they're, uh, they're getting the money. So their first gig was £11, I think, <laughs> they got. And Bill Bruford used to keep accounts. So all the others were just happy to spend it then on taxes, beer and whatever. But not Bill Bruford, he kept his accounts. He knew exactly <laughs> how much money they earned. And I think it was £11 their first gig. Um, so this is Monster Road. I'm sorry there's no plaque up here. I think Dave's been trying to get a plaque up here, but uh, <laughs> uh, with two yes camps and various other people, it's, uh, it's difficult, but who knows? Perhaps for their 60th anniversary, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get an unveiling. But this is, this is the, uh, here you go. Uh, but this is the, made of the BBC Made of Earl Studios. And uh, it's still Made of Earl Studios. The BBC still have uh, uh, live music, particularly uh, there's a radio station called Six Music. Uh, which is a real champion of uh, alternative music, live music, uh, and every year they have their concerts. I have a week of concerts are made available, and every year I apply, and every year I never get it. <laughs> Not one bit. So. Um, but Beatles uh, recorded something like 280 shows. 
for BBC. You see, years ago in the 60s, there were three radio stations, and it's just the BBC, no other radio stations. We had one, the sort of the light channel, which was just the one, and they played recorded music, but mostly live music because the musicians' union was quite uh, powerful at that time, and the idea was to have live music. So often you get other bands doing covers. So that's why the the, um, the Beatles played so many. About four, it's over four years. It's something like two a week. And of course, they just hone their skills that way. But they had, like I said, Yes recorded here, and I mean up till you know, famous ones like um, uh, was it the White Stripes? They did that. I don't want to do it with myself. The Dusty Springfield song that was recorded here. And anybody Doctor Who fans? Do we have any Whovians? The, ra the theme to the theme music for Doctor Who, the Radiophonic Workshop, that was here as well. How exciting is that? Uh, we had a couple of Hoovians yesterday, um, but uh, it's a lovely studio. And yeah, it was originally a roller skating rink. It's the Maida Vale Studios, and we're in Maida Vale. Very nice area around here. We're going to turn right, and then I've got a little special stop for you. <laughs> Composer. Um, but the Beatles recorded something like 70% of their work here. Uh, Dark Side of the Moon here, of course. Uh, Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Uh, Kate Bush. Record here Radiohead, The Bends. Uh, Lord of the Rings. All sorts of stuff. But we're going to go here. So the pedestrian crossing is there. And it is the one, by the way. It's not these sort of ones about, you know, uh, has been moved and whatever. No, and it's listed as well. So we don't do anything about it. <laughs> um, so this is where the famous Abbey Road, of course, the, the from Abbey Road was uh, the, the sign. It was originally going to be called Everest, uh, but they didn't want to go all the way to Everest, and uh, John Lennon was sick of uh, travelling, and so was uh, So if you're happy to do that, we can do all the, the water if you want to do all the cheesy stuff. Um, a, a tip um, is don't just stand on the edge. If you stand on the edge, everyone assumes you're going to go past, because people will uh, hoot at you. But uh, stand back a little bit, and when you're ready, then do the walk. And I tend to go from that side. I've done this loads of times, so don't worry. <laughs> um, and also, but I'm pleased to hear that Dave uh, has, there should be a sign for Yes 50 on the wall here as well. Thanks to Dave, he, he did that. Top man. So there you go. Excellent. Uh, so this is uh, Rack Studios. Uh, and it was, um, it was owned by uh, Mickey Most, who was like the Simon Cowell of the 60s and 70s, and sort of glam rock as well, or Susie Potter and all sorts of stuff, Mud was another band. Um, and he also, <laughs> but it was a studios, we don't quite know why here, because it's slightly out of the way. Um, but uh, not only Tormato here, but um, Ultravox Vienna, you might know the song, uh, was put here. And if anyone a hot chocolate fan, you're a secret, into a secret bit of dad dancing, you sexy thing. Uh, was recorded here as well. But yeah, this is where Tomato is. Does anyone know why they picked this to record the album? No, we can't. I was asking yesterday, we don't know why. Um, there we go. Um, what we do know is uh, the album cover that you know. Does that mean I have it in it? Actually, this, uh, yeah. This one. Yeah. Um, but of course, it's, uh, the idea is Tour and Tomato, yes, Tour. Uh, which is a uh, rocky outcrop in Dartmoor in southwest England. And uh, that was all, that was hypnosis, of course. And, um, but the actual way you've got the band here, where actually you've got them in their uh, leather jackets and their shades, uh, was not actually filmed there, uh, taken there at all. It's actually just down the road is Regent's Park. So they simply popped along the road uh, and put the Regent's Park, and that's where it was done. <laughs> Because they, certainly Rick Wakeman certainly didn't like the album, did he? I think uh, they hated it, and then they famously poured tomato over in Hypnosis. Thought it was a great idea. I like the story about Rick Wakeman and Union, which you probably know. Do you? You know when they had the Union album in the early 90s, and they were really upset about it because they used, used a lot of session musicians, and, and they actually disowned it. In fact, Rick Wakeman famously threw his copy out of his limousine window, and he calls it Onion because he makes him cry every time he hears it. <laughs> I think it sold well, so they must have made a bit of money from it, but uh, yeah, they hated it, hated it. So we're just going to see a little bit of uh, Rick and Plus Regions Park and then head back down uh, towards uh, um, Palladium. So I'm hoping we might get there by about 12.30, so we're good in time. Everything good all so far? Yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah. Right.